Do you feel ignorant because you don't know numbers? You don't know which one go which way and they got all these marks and things on them? I know, honey, it's hard. But there is a solution. Fort Ben Tutoring. And now here go Mr. Whit. Explain math to us, Mr. Whit. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Whit with Fort Ben Tutoring. And today's tutorial is going to be over the chain rule. That's right. A calculus technique. So if ever you have an equation in the format of f of x equals to a times the quantity of u raised to the n power, especially when n does not equal to 1, then that's a perfect opportunity for you to use the chain rule, all right? And the chain rule is this, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. In order to find the first derivative of that original function, what you would simply do is you would multiply the coefficient a times that original exponent of n. Then you would write down that original function of x, that original u value. Then you subtract 1 from that n value. And then you'll multiply that times the derivative of the n side, the derivative of that original function of x. Yeah. All right, so just keep in mind that when I mention u, u is a function of x. So it could be like 2x minus 5 inside of the parentheses. OK, you'll see because I'm about to show you some examples. All right, let's check it out. Problem number one, ladies and gentlemen. All right, in problem number one, I have f of x equals to the quantity of 2x minus 5 raised to the third power. So this is a perfect format to use a chain rule. So this is what we do. We'll have f prime of x, all right, equals to, my initial coefficient is 1, and I'll multiply 3 times 1, that exponent there. So I'll have 3 times the original u, which is 2x minus 5. I subtract 1 from the exponent, which will give me 2, and then I'll take the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of 2x minus 5 is just 2. So this is what I have thus far. From there, you'll go ahead and simplify this problem. You want to have it in a nice pristine format, especially for your instructors and a lot of textbooks. So they won't just leave it like this. They'll go ahead and multiply the 3 times the 2 together and give you 6 times 2x minus 5 raised to the second power. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be my solution. All right, so once again, we recognize that we did have a quantity raised to a power that's not 1, and that gave us an opportunity to use the chain rule. All right, so we brought down that exponent of 3. We then multiplied it times our original u value of 2x minus 5. We subtracted 1 from the 3 to get 2, and then we took the derivative of 2x minus 5, which is 2. All right, so that's our answer, ladies and gentlemen. We're moving on to the next problem. That was problem number 1. So here's... Problem number two. In problem number two, we have y equals to the quantity of 5x squared minus 2x plus 4 raised to the fourth power. All right, so we'll find the first derivative. So we have y prime equals to multiplying that exponent of 4 times our coefficient of 1. That'll be 4 times the original quantity of 5x squared minus 2x plus 4. We'll subtract 1 from that original exponent to make it a 3. Then we'll take the derivative of the inside, which is going to be 10x minus 2. All right, just like that. Then we'll be responsible for simplifying this further, ladies and gentlemen. And notice our last set of parentheses here, we have a GCF of 2. So we'll need to factor out that 2 from that 10x minus 2 here. So factoring out 2, we'll have 2 times 4 times 5x squared minus 2x plus 4 raised to the third power times 5x minus 1. All right? So rewriting this, you'll have y prime equals to 8 times 5x minus 1 times the quantity of 5x squared minus 2x plus 4 raised to the third power. And this is the answer, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. There's your derivative right there. All right, that was problem number two. Let's move on to our next problem, problem number three. Okay, in problem number three, we have seven times the quantity of x squared minus five raised to the fifth power. Notice how in this problem here, we don't have a coefficient of one, it's seven. So remember that we'll multiply the exponent times that coefficient. So five times seven gives me 35. Then my u value of x squared minus five raised to the 5 minus 1, it gives me 4. And then I'll be multiplying times the derivative of the inside. So that'll give me 2x here. From there, ladies and gentlemen, we can go ahead and multiply that 35 times that 2x. So I'll end up with 70x times x squared 
minus 5 raised to the fourth power and this is my answer here all right so just keep in mind anytime you have a coefficient other than 1 in front of the parentheses remember to multiply that initial exponent times that value so that's how we ended up with a 35 after multiplying 5 times 7 we brought down our original quantity of x squared minus 5 we subtracted 1 from the original exponent of 5 to get 4 and then we took the derivative of the inside to give us 2x and of course we simplified further from there by multiplying that 2x times the 35 to give us 70x times x squared minus 5 raised to the fourth power and done that's problem number three ladies and gentlemen problem number four in problem number four we have y equals to 4 over x minus 3 raised to the third power well what I want you to make note of ladies and gentlemen is that this is a rational expression and you may be tempted to use the quotient rule and nothing would be wrong with that however I wanted to show you that if you go ahead and rewrite this problem as y equals to 4 times x minus 3 raised to the negative third power we can just simply use the chain rule so depending on your preference of operations when you're dealing with calculus you may prefer to do the chain rule versus the quotient rule they're pretty much interchangeable depending on the problem so here you can end up with this derivative being negative 3 times 4 which is negative 12 times the quantity of x minus 3 you'll still subtract 1 from that initial exponent so negative 3 minus 1 gives me negative 4 then times the derivative of the inside which is 1 in this case so writing this in a preferred manner meaning without negative exponents you'll have negative 12 over the quantity of x minus 3 raised to the fourth power and that's your answer ladies and gentlemen just like that done and done okay so once again we started out with a rational expression and we were able to rewrite that in the format that was better suited for the chain rule and there you go all right done and done ladies and gentlemen that was problem number four so the next problem is on its way problem number five I have f of x equals to the quantity of 3x times x plus 3 raised to the seventh power which is all being raised to the fourth power so overall ladies and gentlemen you do have the chain rule situation going on however your derivative is going to be a bit more complicated because you have two parts within this that are multiplying together which means during our process we'll need to use the product rule so let's go ahead and work this problem out so first of all f prime of x is going to equal to you still bring that exponent of 4 down as your coefficient now so this will be 4 times the original value of 3x times x plus 3 to the seventh power you'll subtract 1 from the 4 to give you a 3 and now you'll need to multiply times the derivative of the inside well the derivative of the inside ladies and gentlemen is going to need to be done using the product rule so I'm going to show that this first part I'll call f the second part I'll call g so just to remind you the product rule is f prime g plus f g prime so that's what we'll be using to derive the inside all right so I moved it down here so we can have more room to work with so next we'll be multiplying by the derivative of the inside so I'm gonna use a bracket here and I'll show that the derivative of f using the product rule is going to be 3 times our g value which is x plus 3 raised to the seventh power plus my f value of 3x times the derivative of the g value which is going to be 7 times x plus 3 raised to the 6th power times 1 alright so that's what I have there so next is going to be the job of simplifying all of this ladies and gentlemen so let's see what happens here I'm going to bring down that first part of 4 times the quantity of 3x times x plus 3 raised to the seventh power which is being cubed and then I'll be combining what I can in here in the second set of brackets so this is going to be 3 times x plus 3 raised to the seventh power plus I'll have 21x times x plus 3 raised to the sixth power so this is what I have thus far notice that in the second set of brackets I have a common factor of 3 and x plus 3 to the 6th power so I'll be factoring that out so I have 4 times the quantity of 3x times x plus 3 raised to the 7th power which is being cubed times the GCF of this next set of brackets which is going to be 3 times 
x plus 3 to the 6th power times the quantity of x plus 7 plus 7x. And that's what I have thus far. Simplifying further, we'll say that we have 4 times 3, which is 12. This is going to be x plus 3 raised to the 6th power times my quantity of 3x times x plus 3 to the 7th power, which is all being raised to the 3rd power. And then inside of this last set of brackets here, I can combine those like terms to give me a result of 8x plus 7. All right, and that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's the derivative. That's the answer. Okay, well, glad you got all of that, ladies and gentlemen, right? So that was problem number 5, and we're going to go ahead and box this sucker up and that's going to be the answer for problem number five right there. So in this problem, we had to do the product rule as well as the chain rule. So that was a combination of the two. And that was problem number five. Okay. In problem number six, ladies and gentlemen, we have this problem here where we have y equals to the quantity of x plus 3 over x cubed raised to the 4 power. So within this chain rule problem, we also have to do the quotient rule. So knowing that ahead of time, I'm going to go ahead and write down the fact that the quotient rule is f prime g minus f g prime all over g squared. All right. So let's continue with this. In this problem here, the derivative is going to be 4 times the quantity of x plus 3 over x cubed. You'll subtract 1 from the 4 to get a 3. Then this is going to be times the result of finding the, the derivative of the inside. So knowing that the numerator is f and the denominator is g, let's go ahead and identify that. I'll label it for you. The numerator will be f, the denominator will be g, and I'll be using this formula here, which is the quotient rule. All right, so taking the derivative of the numerator, I have 1 times the denominator, which is x cubed, minus f, which is x plus 3, times the derivative of g, the denominator, which is going to be 3x squared. All of this is going to be over g squared, so x cubed squared is x to the 6th power. All right, so that's what I have thus far. Now that I have that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to bring this down and try to simplify as much as possible. We'll have 4 times x plus 3 over x cubed cubed times, and I'm going to simplify the numerator here. This is going to be x cubed, and then distributing a negative 3x squared times that x plus 3. I'll have negative 3x cubed, and this is going to be minus 9x squared all in the numerator and that's going to be over my x to the 6th power just like that from here ladies and gentlemen i'll be able to simplify further by writing this as y prime equals to 4 times x plus 3 over x cubed which is being cubed times this simplifies to give me a negative 2 x cubed minus 9 x squared all over x to the 6th power Okay, Now, we can simplify everything in this last set of parentheses here by x to the second power, and I'm going to do just that. I'll also be factoring out a negative as well. So here, you'll have y prime equals to negative 4 times x plus 3 over x cubed cubed. I've already factored out that negative and put it in front, so I'll be reducing everything by x squared. So that leaves me with a result of 2x plus 9 all over x to the fourth power. All right, and this is going to be my final result here, ladies and gentlemen. So let's go ahead and put a red box around that. And that is the result for problem number six, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, this has been the chain rule. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring. And as always, please rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's presentation by Fort Bend Tutoring. Did you understand the program? Would you like to rate us or give us some feedback or subscribe to us? You could do all that on tutormemath.net.